wedding. No. They have a special the wedding planner. Like he does all the other, you know, corporate stuff. Corporate meetings. Yeah. If you would like a slice of pizza, there's pizza here. You can come up and get it quietly. There's a really nice meeting. But why don't we get started? Yeah. Um, this is called Autumn Water. Yeah. 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 Why don't we get started? Yeah. 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 Why don't we get started? Because we have a lot to do in the next hour and 25 minutes. It's not working. All right, I'm John Spector, I'm the chair of the EDC. Uh, this is a meeting of the, uh, of the working group that's focused on downtown revitalization. Uh, Larry Niles is a recent addition. Jody Natali and Beth Finlayson have been um, working on this for some time. And Ray is, has stepped down because he has a conflict. Once he became a select board member, he officially stepped off the committee, but he's contributed a lot and been, been heavily involved. So here's the agenda between now and 7.30. We will end on time because we have another meeting at 7.30. <coughs> no, that's not the only reason, but. Um, but we really appreciate you coming out to help with this. Uh, we'd like to start to take a couple minutes and explain again, but also in a little bit more detail, what we're hoping to accomplish by 7.30 um, and how the process is going to work. We'll take a few minutes to summarize very briefly the 27 ideas that have been put forward, most of them recommended by Du Bois, du, I'm not going to say this right, du Bois and, du Bois and King. Um, and a couple of them uh, added onto the list, and we're going to have an opportunity to accept ideas tonight to add on. We'll cut that off at 7 o'clock, and everyone will vote. And in order to vote, either now or by 7 o'clock, you need one of these. Everybody has one. Oh, okay. So does anybody not have this little red sticker thing? Okay. Does anyone have more than one? <laughs> you have more than one? Oh, see, I told you, it was the select board members that we have to watch out for. Um, you need some back, I have three. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Oh, you have an extra one. Yeah, just pass them up to, oh, but just hold on to them. You give it when we cut. Oh, okay. Oh, we can say all later. Okay. If you have more than one, when it comes time to vote, would you just give them back to Joe? Wording them? And we get them too, by the way, we get to vote. <laughs> okay, and then we'll take a few minutes at the end to sort of reflect, and that will be that will be our meeting. Okay, any questions? Are we okay? Yeah. Yeah, you're saying that we put a sticker on it if we approve of something. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to explain that. Oh, exactly. because it could be a neutral thought. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to explain that. Okay. But the answer, the short answer is yes. If you if you want us to focus on it going forward, you put a sticker on. And focus would mean debate on it. Focus means plan for it, and I'll explain. I'll okay. explain what that means. Yeah, by the time you're ready to do the stickers, you'll have full, full instructions. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So here's the process. We're basically, we need input from you all to help us prioritize. We can't deal with the the the, the number of ideas that, that were generated by Du Bois and King, and perhaps will be generated tonight. We just don't have the bandwidth, and so we need to focus our work on a smaller number of ideas. And we're going to use tonight as one very important input, not the only input, but one very important input to try to figure out. For which projects do we invest the time and energy to develop plans before making a final decision to fund them, either in December or sometime earlier next year? We're, we're currently starting to prepare our plan for calendar 2020. This is a new thing. The EDC has never had a full calendar year plan. We're doing that on purpose, offset from the town, which is June to June, or July to June, uh, to, to kind of spread the load. And our plan is going to focus on four priorities. And we don't want to debate them tonight. You can come to the EDC meeting afterwards. We'll talk about that. We've been talking about it for the last three or four months in public meetings. The four priorities are to market Woodstock, to expand what we're calling entry-level housing and related services like child care, to improve physical amenities, and to support the business environment. And tonight, we're talking only about one of those four priorities, improving physical amenities. The other areas, we're also doing the same kind of thing. We're trying to figure out what should our, pro what should our projects be for 2020. We're going to use different processes for the different four areas. But for physical amenities, we want to use a very public process because there's been a lot of study done and a whole lot of ideas generated. In the area of physical amenities, these projects, as without discussing any further, we all know that they need to be very carefully planned. Things can go wrong. And what, what's the quote? Um, 
Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson once said, plans are great until you get hit in the face. Right. <laughs> and so that may be what happened to us. We need to plan each project carefully. And there's too many projects for us to develop detailed work plans for. We just can't do it. So we need to prioritize. And so we want to understand what you all think the physical amenities priorities are within that force so that we can work on developing plans for these priorities. What I think the EDC is going to decide to do, this is still a little bit up in the air, is that we're going to decide to adopt an annual plan, that we're going to have a public meeting in December to present our annual plan, and basically say, look, these are the priorities in the four areas, here are the programs and projects, here's how we got to them. And when we talk about physical amenities, we're going to say, well, we had a meeting in September, and we put up all the ideas, we generated other ideas, and these five were the ones that came up near the top of the list. And we've worked on those five. We think four of them are feasible and we can afford it. We're proposing to do these four for 2020. I'm making this up, but that's sort of how this meeting tonight will evolve into what I hope is an annual plan in December or maybe January at the latest. And then we'll implement it in 2020. And then we'll repeat the process again next September and October and keep going. So that's what we want to do tonight. Tonight we want to prioritize 26, 27 ideas that are on the piece of paper. If you will have a little bit of time, if you have other ideas to add to the list, and we'll prioritize those as well. Now, one thing that we want to be clear about, there were a few people in planning for this meeting who said, well, wait a minute, the visioning project is also going on. Isn't that setting priorities too? The answer is yes, it's going on. Yes, it's also setting priorities. The scope of the visioning project is much broader than the EDC. It includes things like the education system and the diversity of our community and the effectiveness of our government and the uh, environment, and you mean, you know, the, the, uh, you know, global warming and, and the things that we want in, in the environment. And it includes the areas of the EDC. And in those areas, it includes our, some things in each of our four priorities. These are some ideas, you probably haven't seen these yet, they haven't been fully published, but these are some of the themes that are coming out of the interviews and the workshops and so forth that the visioning team has done. And you can see in these three, in, for tonight's meeting, if you look at this, what we're saying about this column, it doesn't change really anything we're doing tonight. It's very consistent with the kind of ideas that are up on the wall, the kind of ideas that you might generate. Access to parks and open space, trails and fitness and recreation, restoration and preservation of iconic historic buildings, compact walkable village center. Those are big, broad themes. We can't really vote on those. They're not specific enough. But the basic point is to reassure you that, first of all, the projects are coordinated. <coughs> but secondly, that there's nothing that's going on in the visioning project that would lead us to say, well, wait a minute, we can't do that idea. We have to do this one because the visioning project said, you know, we need to go in a different direction. I think we have the flexibility tonight to assume that what's coming out of the visioning project is generally supportive of most of the, of really all of the ideas that are up here. So we're operating tonight at a more specific level. Does that all make sense? Okay, so, so, yeah, so that's, so that's what we're trying to get at. We're trying to get out of tonight a list of, we've got 27 ideas up on your piece of paper, these 27. Let's say you come up with five more. We want a list of how many votes did each of the 32 ideas have. And hopefully, it won't be even, right? Hopefully, there'll be five that get a lot of votes, and then it tails off really quickly. And that gives us what we need to say, OK, fine, we can work on five. I hope it's not 22 or all the same, because then we have, we, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't we, do. we don't have enough people to do that. OK, here's how we're going to summarize the initiatives. There's 27 initiatives. If we take two minutes per initiative, we are done with the meeting. So we're not going to say anything unless you have a question. And it's fine to ask a question about clarification. Do not advocate. Clarify if you don't understand what something means, is it? So, are you going to give us the cost for that? Right. No, we're we're not going to give you nearly enough. We're not going to give you any additional information about these ideas, and we know that's going to hamper your decision making. We're going to talk about that. We we, we it's a chicken and egg process. We don't have we we don't have the project plans to figure out the cost. You're going to have to use your own judgment when voting for these. So, for example. You know, um, uh, what's a small one? You know, um, putting, you know, improving, uh, where is it? Um, I'm just looking, there's a thing about the, 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 uh, the, the info center. Um, better signage for the welcome center is obviously less expensive than renovate the town green. I mean, that's sort of two extremes. I mean, you don't need me to tell you that. 
So, so I'm going to come to the caveats. I'm going to come to the things that are going to make this hard and that you're going to struggle with. But we're just going to try to, to do our best. Tom? John, have you determined your priorities, whether it is the existing citizens of Woodstock or whether you're targeting uh, uh, visitors? Well, okay, the mission of the EDC. Did everyone hear the question? Oh, have we decided what our priority is to target residents, to you know, to serve residents in effect, or to serve visitors? The mission, uh, it's not, we have determined it, and it isn't going to precisely answer your question, right? The mission hasn't changed, and perhaps you had an important hand in actually crafting it, uh, the, the words, which is basically we're trying to grow the local economy by retaining people and give the people who live here, residents, giving them a great experience, the best experience we can, so that they'll stay, and by attracting more visitors to come so that they'll consider coming, that that helps the economy and so that they'll consider coming permanently. So the answer is it's both. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering about the status of EC fiber, because without broadband, I don't know where the economic development is going to go. So in terms of the priorities, is that something that EDC looks at, or is that? Well, that, that is, that, that's not, that, I would not classify that as, well, I would not classify that as physical, well, I could it's say. It's not a physical amenity, I yeah. suppose. It, it's definitely something. It, it's critical. Yeah, the, the four, the, there is, when, when we start, when the EDC starts to focus on its four priorities, well, we have been to some extent. This, I think this committee and the housing committee both might pick that idea up. Uh, I can't speak for them because we have, we're just forming those, uh, not committees, sorry, working groups. You'll correct me when I say committees, working groups. Um, so the short answer is I think EC fiber is important. It, it's, it's, not a, it, it's, not a, it's definitely important for the economic development. I don't think we're going to talk about it much tonight, but it is definitely important. So, uh, okay, I'm uh, in the back, yeah, and then I'll... Where did all these come from? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. Okay. That's right. So, when the EDC started with this project, they focused on Central Village. Yes. For this project tonight, correct. And my question is the priority of Central Village as opposed to the broader town, and why we're focusing here, and there might be, you know, more low-hanging fruit if we were to, you know, try to synthesize this broader as we Okay, so a so two things about the, the subset of things we're talking about tonight and how it fits into the broader priorities of the EDC. First, with respect to the downtown area versus the larger area, I, 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 this is an easy for, answer for me. It, that did not come before my time when we, when we created the, the downtown revitalization project. I, having said that, I'm not being critical of it. It kind of makes some sense, but I understand the fact that it only covers part of what's done. I will say that tonight, it's fine with me if in the brainstorming part, if people want to come up, we, we can't take 40 new ideas. We don't have room on the walls. But it's fine with me if people have some big ideas that are outside of the village. I don't think we have to limit the new brainstorming to that. And if there's huge support for that, that might change our, our direction. So that's the best way I could be responsive to it without redoing the past. Uh, Beth and then okay, I just wanted to say um, in response that when the proposals came in from a variety, I think four or five um, firms that were going to assess, the proposals were made for the meter district, and that was the request. That was of, the direction. That, that was, was that, that, was, that was the direction that was given. I'm just asking the Oh. You changed the slide. Can oh, sorry, I'll go back. That's oh, all right. Can you um, describe what is meant by affordable, flexible, and creative housing options? I, I, to be honest, I, I mean, I could make it up, but I, I just, two days ago, I got a draft of s some working papers that the visioning group is working on. They, one of them said, you know, people might be confused tonight about the two projects. So I just took the words from their document. I actually have literally not even talked to anybody about it. And just, Obviously, that one fits doesn't fit in the amenities column. It fits in the housing column. So I just put, I just went through it, took the phrases that look like they fit to show that it's lining up with us. I honestly, I'm not direct, I'm not avoiding your question. I just don't know the answer. Well, the report that the ABC paid for, the 140-page report, said that people who want affordable housing 
are looking for apartments in multi-unit dwellings. Oh, you're talking about the housing study, sorry. This is from the visioning project, but, but yes, correct. No, 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 no. They should go Absolutely, I agree. So, yes. So how are you going to create multi-unit housing? How are we going to, or are we going to? That's why we're, okay, we, that's why we have a working group on housing. That, we don't know. We're calling it entry-level housing, which I think, with the idea is that it's small units of housing. That's what the EDC thinks is needed. Small multi-units, like apartment buildings, is what people in entry-level and affordable housing are looking for. Great. Well, then that hopefully that then that's the, ha the housing committee hasn't formed up yet. So the housing working group hasn't formed up yet. As soon as it forms up, it's going to reach out, get you know, review the housing study. If there's anything, in, it looks like there's something in the visioning project that will uh, touch on that. We'll reach out, obviously, you know you're obviously very involved in the real estate industry and others, and we'll set the housing priorities accordingly. Can you make a priority of putting realtors on that committee? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Okay, well, let's move on. Yes, absolutely. We, we, we certainly want to get information from realtors. They, they, I think, have a really good sense of the pulse of what the demand is. Let, I'm going to move on. If, I, I, in, in line with that, because I have another question in terms of who is on your committees and the commission itself, yeah. and does it represent b and owners uh, and restaurant owners who are pay paying the 1% that makes it yeah. possible, and real estate okay, yeah. people. I'm not a real estate person, no, I'm, I'm just asking, because they will have a valuable perspective in what the market needs. Absolutely. Are. Let me just say that I, I understand. Are, are, are they represented? There are B&B there are owners on the, on the, the sorry, there are property owners. Uh, Business owners. Business owners, including uh, hotel owners. Uh, uh, the well, Woodstock Inn is represented. Hotel, but the other smaller hotels. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Can, uh, there was there was someone. He just stepped off. We have an open seat. We would welcome someone from that industry. But can I just suggest? I understand that there's a there is a tremendous amount of pent up questions and maybe criticism of the EDC. Understand that. But what we're trying to do is to hold public meetings, get the kind of feedback from a broad range of people like I'm getting tonight on a specific topic so we can make progress. So I'm happy to meet uh, John Spector, jonathan.spector at gmail.com. I'm happy to meet offline with anybody on any of these questions. They're perfectly reasonable questions. But let's just keep going on what the agenda is. So, all right, so now, here's where we could spend too much time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down and if you have any questions about what this is, then ask. But use your imagination. You're not, we don't have lots of information to tell you. If, you know, it's sort of better signage for the Welcome Center. We can't tell you anything about the sign. It's just a phrase, the idea, better signage. If you think that's important, you can vote for it. If you think it's less important, then renovate the green, which is a bigger thing, and you'll vote for that. We, you know, we, have, no, we have no real information about almost every one of these projects. Other than that, we're, that's our problem. We're trying to get it down to, in your instincts, what do you think is really the things we should focus on to get that information so we can decide whether to spend money on it or not. Okay, better signage for the Welcome Center. Everyone knows where the Welcome Center is. Any questions about idea number one? Get through this one. Okay, good. We're moving. Convert the intersection of Elm and Central Street into a gateway. This is a pretty abstract idea. Yeah, what does it mean? So it, it, it means what you imagine. It's something, what they meant in the text was something that welcomes you to Woodstock. It's like you enter that way and it welcomes you to Woodstock. You have to check with the Vermont State Highway Department office if you're going to modify that. All of, these, all of these ideas, the whole idea of developing detailed plans for any of these ideas is to do all of those sorts of checks in advance before we spend money and before we go ahead and do it. That's what we can't do that for 29 things and that's why we're having, one of the reasons why we're having a meeting tonight. So you can get through this quicker. I did read through, it's very interesting, the Du Bois and King report, 78 yeah. pages, and they go into more details. So right. if you have the time, I think we'll have Jonathan go through this, go through that. It's right. very clear, it's very easy to read. Okay, great. And, and it's been published yeah. since yeah. March, it was presented pictures. to the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah. And it was exactly. Some so gateways and stuff. Convert the info booth on, on the green to an info kiosk. So if you have a different idea for the kiosk, do I wait or do I say it now? It, it, uh, no, you definitely wait. Okay. The brainstorm. Right. Thank you for asking. The, any questions about just, it's you know a standalone kiosk basically instead of a booth? Between a booth and a kiosk. A, a kiosk would be um, a bulletin board. 
you know, no, you don't no, have a nicer no, one. No, and nobody in it. Nobody in it, right? It's, it's a flat panel or, or an X and something. Yeah, um, painted pathway to the Welcome Center. This is something on the ground that would be on that road that goes to the Welcome Center. Something that, you know, guides you. Any, I think it's pretty straightforward. Brick wall mural on the street to the Welcome Center. On one side of that street, there's a brick wall. It's empty. We had one. Paint the mural. And that idea's been around for a long time. Okay, I take it. No one, everyone understands that. Okay, restrike parking to improve access to the green. There are parking spots at times that are right in front of the, in the breaks in the fence. Restrike them to move them away from that so people can get into the green at the entrances. It's pretty straightforward. Any questions? Okay, repaint crosswalks to improve visibility. <laughs> I presume that's not a lack of understanding, that response. Move curb around green to allow for safe circulation. So move the curb out, is that right? It would increase the space between the curb and the fence by moving one or the other, is that correct, right? That's correct. In order so that when you get out of the car on the green side, there's room for you to open the door and be there. So the street would be smaller. Or the, or the green would be smaller by a few feet. One or, I don't know which is less, which is more expedient to move. It's a big, it's an expensive idea. What about when it's all the snow there? Yeah. It would, the snow would have more room to gather. Um, okay, I'm going to keep going. Uh, convert Elm Street sidewalk to multi-business ramp to improve ADA access. This idea is to take the sidewalk and a part of the sidewalk and replace it with a ramp that cuts across multiple businesses rather than just each business trying to do this on their own. So imagine taking, I guess, half the sidewalk and having, instead of it being flat all the way, it's flat here and then a ramp coming up that crosses all the other buildings. Okay? Um, add sidewalk bump amps. Do you know what that means? That's a good idea. I'm going to keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Add tree grates to sidewalks. Does anyone know what tree grates are? They make the trees grow better. Add structural soil under the sidewalks. Is that related to the trees or is it related to the sidewalks? So it's to, this, is, this is to improve. This is a gardening recommendation. To improve. This is not going to fix the sidewalks. It's going to improve the, the trees. The root structure. The root structure of the trees. So vote for that if you want better trees. Promote and report. Yeah. <coughs> promote and number thirteen. Promote and develop space behind the history center as a public space. <coughs> what space is this? The big lawn behind the history center. Does that belong to the history center? It does, and so this is one of the caveats that are going to come up. This recommendation and a number of others involve private property, and so one of the one of the ways, for example, that the votes tonight might not convert into what we actually do in 2020 is that the owner of the private property, there's other private property ideas in here, uh, the owner of the private property says, well, I don't agree with that. I don't let you do it, or I don't like the way you're doing it, or whatever. So th there's no guarantee that if you vote for that, we can't make the History Center agree to it. We don't know what the it is yet. And it is private property. And there's another, the, ne the next one, number 14, improves the St. James Green with landscaping design and vegetation. That's owned by St. James. So, yeah. I'd like to have you do not vote for it. It won't happen. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> thank you for that. That no, was good. That was very quick. That was very clever. I like that. Okay, redesign. Am I saying it right? Tribu Park? Tribu Park. It is Tribu. It's French. Tribu Park. Well, how do we pronounce it in Vermont? Tribu Park. <laughs> We designed that park to improve visibility of the, it says monuments here, of the monuments there. What does that mean, the cutting down trees? I'm sorry? What does that mean, cutting down trees? We can talk about that. I mean, the monuments are there. You're not going to elevate them, are you? I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a question of if you feel like that park is an underutilized asset and could be made, you know, more prominent and better, then vote for that, otherwise no. Renovate Teagle's Landing. The stairs, this we know, this is the one project we know something about. The stairs, the railings, and some of the landscaping. Isn't it, already in process? it is now on hold pending this. Oh. Just 
Because I'm still fairly new. Where is Teagle's Landing? Teagle's Landing is the uh, is on the bridge by the post office, and it's on the opposite oh, yeah. across the store street from the post office. And there's a stairway down to a little stream. Oh, okay. okay. Good question. Uh, reorient the town crier and the bench. This is also on private property, by the way. The History yeah. Center owns that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So move it away. Move it from where it is to a, a place that might be, you know, prep, I think the idea is nearby, but move it back. Just make it a little bit uh, better. Um, we move crosswalks that lead to nowhere. Where's that? <laughs> there, there are several, and my advice on this one, I'm not trying to advocate much, but we are redoing, the, 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 the roads will get repaved in the next 18 months. And I'm pretty sure at that point that you don't have to vote for this idea and it will probably get done anyway. <laughs> so um, replace memorial trees that are missing. I wish I knew specifically where they are. I don't. Um, and how many are there? So, two or three. A handful of memorial trees. Okay, the next four, 23, 23, all have to do with street furniture. Benches, and if you vote for that, you're voting to complete the benches project. We've replaced many of the benches, but there are still what I would call ad hoc benches around the town. And, 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 and if you vote for that, we would finish those benches with the same sort of, you know, make them all consistent. So you must have some pricing on that one, right? Because that one, the benches are about six or seven hundred dollars. <laughs> Per bench. Well, and how many are we talking about <laughs> replacing in this yeah. additional um, floors? If you're buying more than I'm guessing uh, can. <coughs> can. <coughs> Order back to uh, bicycle replacing and, and or adding bicycle racks. <laughs> I skipped by garbage cans, sorry, trash cans replacing and coming up with a, you know, a nice design and making consistent for all the trash cans but in town. you've already ordered those, haven't you? We have not ordered those. No, we've we, stopped. We, we proposed, <coughs> pardon me, that was next on our agenda until we decided oh, to hold this okay. meeting. And, right. and uh, we let you folks decide. Has it been <coughs> selected? We, we selected some, and we got approval from the trustees. I think we moved forward to the design review board. And uh, but we kept it. We stopped it right there until we got input from the community, <coughs> whether not to move forward or not. There's, there's been no review by the design review board. Well, okay. I have a selection. I, well, we would. We, I mean, we would. We, we would leverage the work that's been done, but we would make sure we, we would develop full plans for each of these. So if that requires, obviously, review I by the board. I don't know what you selected, but right. if it were, Could we were a different one or preferred, that's still changing. Right. Yeah, this is absolutely still changeable, yes. I think we would, yeah. I mean, we would use the information because there was a group of, there was a public meeting in which that design was selected, but yeah, it, it, it would be, it would be changeable. We, if, especially if it has to have review. We're, we're not, we're not, <coughs> any reviews, any reviews, one of the reasons we're doing these projects is to make sure that any reviews of design review, development review, uh, conservation commission, planning commission. State regulations. State regulations, yeah. Um, the select board, of course, has to has to approve everything. So, the village trustees. Like, uh, Sorry. The letter receptacles will be, will be complicated as well. But Fine. Yeah. No. No. That's why we want to do a plan. If we, if that comes, but we don't. Again, we don't want to do plans for 29 things when we only have the capacity to do five or ten, five or eight. Okay. Bike racks. The same thing. I think there's a couple of bike racks in town. Maybe we need more. Maybe we need better ones. Maybe we don't. Uh, planters. Same thing. There's lots of planters around early a lot um, okay the next one is gonna I do I want to take a minute to explain about the voting on the next one wayfinding was a very important set of recommendations by Dubois and King wayfinding was recommended with multiple uh, examples of how to do wayfinding sidewalk signs street signs history signs I think is the same was history signs info kiosks and audio tour are there apps? Okay, let's say audio tour would be digital. Let's say digital broadly. At the presentation of the Dubois and King uh, report, the issue of street signs, the particular example, that particular example of, of wayfinding, of signage actually, not digital, but signage, was a very contentious issue. People felt very strongly about 
whether there should be more signs or fewer than we have now, and if there were signs, what they should look like, and so forth. If you, are, if you think that wayfinding is important, but you feel very strongly that only a certain kind of wayfinding is important, and that you would really be opposed, if we're going to put up signs, then you'd vote against it, but if you do digital, let's say, you'd be in favor, then vote for it. And we will develop a plan for wayfinding, and we will have another round of input. We know this is a sensitive issue, it's an important issue, and we'll, we'll, you'll get another chance. But, but we want to really understand tonight, is wayfinding something that people think we need? I mean, obviously it would be nice to have. Is it something that should be at the top of the priorities or not? So don't worry about voting for it and then having your, your hated option adopted. We'll give you another chance to vote that one down at a later time. Does that make sense? Yeah. So would, would that potentially shift the current town policies on signage? Or would it be a one-off project where the rules only apply to this particular I don't know. I don't know. I think what we want, if, if you all say wayfinding is one of the top things, we're going to start to figure that out. If you say it isn't, we'll wait till next year, and maybe next year you'll say it is, or you won't. There's a lot of work. I mean, these projects, even, you know, Don's saying even the trash cans require a fair bit of work, so that's why we're doing this tonight. So, all right, we're almost there. There are three ideas, 24, 20, 25, 26, and 27, that with full disclosure here were not included in the Dubois and King report. Partly, I'm not sure why, but part, partly because, well, maybe because one of them, a couple of them were outside of the physical area, but also these are ideas, you can consider them the beginning of the brainstorming. These are ideas that are under active discussion and have been for some time, and we thought it would be silly, since they are very much in this physical amenities bucket, to exclude them. So we want to get a sense of how important they are. And they are to further enhance the East End Park, terrific park, but there's more work to do, and they're trying to raise money, should the EDC be supporting that? Building a river loop trail, and Tom, do you want to just in 30 seconds describe what that what the river loop trail is? It depends still um, on private owners, uh, but the possibility we're a community based on a river, and there is some beautiful property uh, just to the kind of west and north of the uh, re uh, the treatment facility, sewage treatment facility that we in fact could get three to five miles of trails that would incorporate uh, the rivers. Okay, that idea has been worked on, not, not ready yet, part of the private, right. private property issue and so forth. And the third one is renovate the town green. Yes. Now, village. The, village. the village green, I'm sorry. No, okay, renovate the village green. And that means, you know, that's a, a big project, it, it, you know, potentially, you know, thinking about repairing or replacing the fence, thinking about uh, the pathways, thinking about vegetation, so forth. I think the lighting has been done, but you know, it's, it's a significant, it would be a significant project with a significant impact. So, okay, so those are the, those are the 27 ideas. Now, let me just talk a little bit about the problem that you're going to have. Um, so, so, these are some of the caveats. In some cases, it's going to be hard for you to prioritize because we don't have detailed information yet. And I think maybe that's true for in all cases. We really don't have the detailed information. We understand it's going to be hard to prioritize. There's only a small group here. This is a bigger group. We just want to kind of hear what you think off the top of your head. It may turn out that there aren't clear priorities. That's our, our problem, which I hope doesn't happen, but it may. So that's a problem for after this meeting. Some of the ideas may turn out not to be feasible, like, I guess, the St. James Green less predicted. <laughs> you know, maybe the History Center, maybe, and maybe other projects which don't rely on private property but just turn out to be much more expensive. Or there's a regulatory problem that we, you know, it turns out we can't create a gateway at Elman Central Street because, <coughs> for whatever reason. Um, in the course of developing more detailed plans, we may find that they're infeasible. Like, for example, we may find that it's just too expensive. Teagle's Landing, we think, is going to cost X, but it might cost three or four X. We just may not have the money to do it. Also, just remember that for today's meeting, we're just prioritizing ideas for calendar 2020 because we have a certain capacity to do work. Ideas not implemented can be implemented in a subsequent year, and I don't know exactly this 2020, is, this process tonight and the planning process over the next few months and the calendar year plan for the EDC are all kind of a one-year test. But if it works, and I think it may, I think it will, then we're going to do this again. And you can imagine that we're going to take those four ideas off because we did them, and those three ideas off because they can't be done. And then we're going to have 20 ideas plus the eight that you come up with tonight, and we're going to do it again next year, because <laughs> we get funding every year, and we'll keep going until we 
run out of ideas or run out of money. Yeah. Uh, now that the EDC and the 20 percent option tax has been in effect for what, two years now, three years? Three, three, three years. Four years. Four years. Four years. Four years. Uh, and this might help people with their way they vote is, what is the ballpark, but what's that bringing in each year? Yeah, it brings in about $300,000 okay. per year. So you can think so about you can think about what we have to play with. Exactly. Okay. Uh, the last thing, and this is important, is that we don't yet know the funding that's available for the physical amenities priority, because there are three other priorities. Housing, in, and, and of, of the other three, housing is likely to be very expensive to create incentives, however we do it, to create incentives to build, you know, multi, whatever type of housing is, is going to be needed. We're not going to be the builders, by the way, but, but it, we, we believe that there are going to need to be incentives to create that. So, uh, and marketing is also expensive. Um, supporting the business environment is unclear because we don't yet know what the initiatives are. But we haven't allocated funds yet across these four because we don't know what the programs are. That's what's going to happen in the December, in between now and December. And when we come to the community in December, we're going to say, look, we've got these four priorities. We know what the ideas are in each of the four areas. This is how much we're proposing to spend on each of the four. We've got about $300,000 a year. And we have some money in the bank. So we could, for the first year or two, spend a little bit more than that if we decided to. We could spend less and save it for a big program, you know, a big housing program or a big some other kind of program over multiple years. So these are all the reasons why, if you put 40 dots on that one, we might not do it and why you're going to have trouble putting your dots on, on things. But despite that, we're just going to ask you to do it and do your best. Okay, last question. So, um, in terms of this, there's roughly $300,000 a year max, it may be otherwise distributed. How important is it to take that into consideration in our voting? If there's a lot of energy behind something that's clearly going to cost way more than that, um, should we still put our dot there in the, even because there might be some other grant pathway by which that could actually happen? Yeah, that's a very good question. Everyone hear the question? If something, if you think, so, renovate the Village Green might be the biggest project on, on physical amenities. It might be. A full, complete renovation. Um, if you think that that's important and going to add value, vote for it. Because I think, frankly, I think the town, because we, we will then, if we, if we can't find a way to fund it, it may be at the expense of all the others, but if you think that that's worth the big value, then vote for it. Um, there's nothing on here that we cannot afford to do over, five, over a five-year time frame. I don't mean we can do all of these things, but the, like, we can renovate the village green. It's, you know, we, there's a rough cost estimate of that. John, like, may, may I make a suggestion? Yeah. I'm not going to ask you how to vote, but I'll tell you how I would vote. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> You're going to listen. What, I would, what I'm going to do... And let him just make a comment. Yeah, just let me finish, please. What I'm going to do is vote for things that I think would be the best for the town. Period. And if they're going to be a little bit more expensive or a lot more expensive than they, we can afford this year, maybe we can do it next year or the year after or the year after that. Or over multiple years. Over I multiple don't, years. I don't think... But I'm going to vote for what I think, yeah. my, in my opinion, is the best thing for the town. I think what Joe said is your vote won't be wasted because it's something that's, there's nothing that's completely infeasible on this list. Jennifer? Uh, what is the ultimate, ultimate objective? This, a lot of this looks like civic beautification, and that's always nice. You know, it's nice to see things look better. Why do we want things to look better? We want things to look better to achieve two objectives. One is to give people who live here a better experience so they'll stay, more likely to stay than leave. And secondly, is to attract visitors who come here who find it more beautiful and then decide to come. Well, and come if you are someone who thinks that that is the most important thing about how you would pick where to live, then you would advocate for us to allocate a lot of money to physical amenities. And if you were someone who thought that the way to achieve those two objectives was to market Woodstock better, then you would say, let's, you know, this is all great, folks, but let's not spend too much money on amenities. <coughs> let's put it into marketing. <coughs> you might say housing. Right. Or you might say supporting the local business environment. Those are the four priorities that we think they were set. They were set by the EDC, approved by the select board in public meetings in 2016, and we haven't changed them. And so the purpose of those four things is to achieve those two objectives: have people stay more, <laughs> and have people come and then decide to 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 keep coming or to or eventually to live here. That, that's that's the purpose of the EDC. No. All right. Yes. Well, I just wanted to say that some of these things, too, I mean, it seems like have added value if they're helping to achieve 
one or more of your goals. So of course. the division into physical amenities, for example, further if you enhance access to the East End Park, let's say, you're taking people all the way down past all those businesses in town. Hopefully helping the business environment. Some, some of these some ideas of affect more than one goal. Absolutely. Yeah, last question. I just, you pointed out that number 18 was going to be taken care of when they reach yes. age. I, I don't know. Six and seven also be taken care of? <laughs> uh, uh, well, yes, yeah, seven will. Repainting the crosswalks, I, I would guess. I mean, I'm not ready. And you. six will. And six will be also? It can be. Okay, yes, it can be. So, yeah, I mean, uh, this is sort of on the fly, but yes, if it were me, I, you know, I, I wouldn't vote for six, seven, or eighteen. I would think you just logically, I would think that can probably be accomplished. Although I think that we have to tell them where to have the yes. cut. So if we don't say anything, right. they'll stay where they are. But 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 I don't think we need. Yes. <laughs> I, but I think we're. I mean, we're not going to completely. If there's some something that's really easy to do, that's free or essentially free that isn't voted on tonight, we'll do it. I mean, if it doesn't take a lot, you know, we don't need a lot of, a lot of, we don't need a work plan to, to move the stripes around the green. We can just get an engineer to tell us in one day. Same thing about crosswalks to nowhere. Let's just have a policy that says crosswalks should go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're a few minutes over, but we still, we still have time. And again, I understand that you're going to, you know, understand that it's going to be hard to, pick, to put the red dots down. But what we're going to do is we have 14 minutes for some new ideas, for additional ideas. Keep them, here, here are the rules about brainstorming. Okay, do your best. We just want to understand what you think priorities are. Doing your best. All right. Oh, where's the point? This is what you've got in your piece of paper. Okay, here are the ground rules for the next 14 minutes. This is really hard for those of you that are, no evaluation. No jiggling of faces or noses. Yeah. No. Well, what do you mean? No jumping up and saying that's not a le that's not legal. Right. Just we just you take you have the idea. We write it down and then we vote on it. One person at one idea at a time. You can't stand up and say two ideas. Everyone gets a chance to have one idea before uh, before. Um, Everybody so we'll we'll gets a chance to speak once one. before you can speak twice. Exactly. And then we stop at 7 o'clock and we vote. And I'll have give you two minutes of instructions about voting so you know what to do with the red dots. Yes. Are you, you have a, I mean, starting with ideas? Yes. Okay. Uh, mandate property owners to maintain a minimum fit and finish to their outside. Thank you. Downside that uh, downtown Woodstock could benefit by the owners improving the look of their buildings. I was gonna I'm not going to personally comment on that, but I was going to say something <laughs> similar to that, but uh, create a fund to help them. Okay. Do, do you accept that? Possibly with a fund? Can I just sure. show that? By the way, I'm not going to get the words perfect, but you'll have to remember. I, I understand, but that's the intent. With a helpful fund. Okay, um, hold on one second. Stuart, you're being pressed into duty. You need to clear those. We'll, we'll figure it out. You'll we'll figure it out. Okay. Do I have to go in the back? No, you just. just no, you can fit as long as people will be able to find it. Okay, who's next? Um, I think we should turn the kiosk in the Village Green into like a. Mont their outpost for coffee because that promotes <laughs> socialization. Okay, so the village, the village, the village green kiosk should be a coffee. Uh, village green hut. Yeah, hut. Yeah. Hut. Yeah. Yeah. Into coffee. Uh, coffee. Uh, into a hut, little coffee, so people uh, can sit know. outside and talk. Coffee. And a mini coffee shop. Yeah. Okay. Twenty-nine. Okay. Yeah. I had a question at twenty-eight. Why don't you find out who the owners are of this real estate? No, that's not one of the rules. You'd probably be very surprised how much wealth is behind some of these. Uh, these uh, okay. I mean, that's a good. That that will will be considered at, at a later stage. But it's a good point. Yeah. Uh, on the east and west end, coming into Woodstock, better welcome sign. Okay. Sign does both things. Better. Signs. East and West. Is that, is that to capture it? 
No, we have one. Oh, we have one. But we don't have any. It takes a really long time to do this. So we don't, we're going to run out of ideas. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. We're going to run out of paper. So try. We keep going. Keep going until we run out. This is beyond the, the village footprint, but um, a walkable path from the village to the white cottage farm. Oh, this is great. I think we should continue it on the Improve sidewalks. Sorry? Improve sidewalks. Yeah. Okay. Um, Is that EDC? <laughs> well, the question is whether it's an amenity, mm -hmm. so the, the or whether it's infrastructure. For example, okay, this is a longer a longer discussion. Um, I'm happy to put that up as an idea. I know that improving the sidewalks is very important for the town. Um, I, I will say that that the, the current view of the EDC is that we fo we're focusing on amenities as opposed to infrastructure. Like like if you said we should build a sewer system, we'd sort of say, well, that's really a municipal responsibility. Okay. Where we draw the line in between. So, so I, I, I don't want to have a big, now is not a good form to have the debate. It's not informed and we need to, you know, kind of have a lot of good amount of time to think it through. So I'm happy to put the idea up, but I just want to say that we're probably going to okay. push back on that. So do you want me to put the idea yeah. up? Put it up. Okay, what number are we up to? 32. 32. Can I just say fixed sidewalks? Is that yeah. Yeah. You steal my USB idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I'm just going to second to fix the sidewalks because it is a physical guarantee uh, not to fall down. Okay, as I put, I put it up. Mm. Yes. I, I have no idea where this falls. Mother Nature. Um, hire somebody to clear the sidewalks instead of having everybody have to clear their own sidewalk oh. in front of their house. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to evaluate that, but I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 if you've got a nice sidewalk and you've got a slip and fall on it, So it in, it one of the hard parts about not no evaluation of this is like, well, does it fit into physical amenities? I'm going to let you all figure that out. I'm just because I don't want to evaluate the idea. It might or it might not. I think that's sort of what you're saying. Whatever the one was about widening the sidewalk outside the green, the village green fencing, yeah. remove the snow in the winter so you can get out of your car. Okay, so I'll say so on sidewalks and and of green. And, and parking space. Yeah. Yeah. And perimeter of green. Okay. Okay. Do you remember how many you did? All right, any more ideas? Go oh, ahead. Have you gone yet? Yeah. Okay, so let me just go. Jennifer, you <coughs> had a hand. Hire a trolley to circle the village, constantly bringing people to the parking area and into the green, like a fun trolley. Oh, I'll just say village trolley. Okay, yes. Signage on Hubbard Bridge that might explain the history of covered bridges in Vermont. Okay, is it, that's, a, that's a specific version of the wayfinding idea, which is historic signs and so forth. Okay. Is that, we accept that if we wanted to do that, you would vote for that one? Is that okay? I mean, it's a, spe yeah, okay. it's a specific version of it. All right, any, any last ideas? Oh my God. We have fewer ideas than pages. Oh no, Mary! Oh, right. yes. No, I'm kidding. Of course, not Mary. I don't, I don't have a new idea. Okay. But the um, building on the green that they're calling a hut, and yeah. uh, some people refer to as a shack, was at one time a, an information booth. Yeah. So I think the idea here is to restore that to what it once was. Yeah, let, let's just agree that, that, that the hut idea, not the coffee one, but the kiosk one, is to turn that into something that is prominent and, and well look, looks and so forth. It might be manned, it might be a beautiful kiosk that isn't manned, but the purpose is that what the report talks about is when people get off a bus, they get off right there, there should be a place where they can go to find things. And that's the, so that's what you're voting for if you're voting for that idea. 
That used to be manned. I was one of the volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to man it all the time. The problem is it turned into a storage shed. Yeah, no, no, I understand. So, so, all right. I have one question. Is there Do you want to put the idea down? Well, it's number three, I, I, it's number three uh, which is convert the info booth on the green into an info kiosk. Yeah. Let's just say into a beautiful info kiosk. In, in other words, it's, it's to make it right, whatever that, that means. It's not right now. Does Woodstock have a no smoking ordinance? On the green, on the, in the parks. Okay, but that's not, now we're not okay. physical amenities. So any other physical amenities ideas? Okay, fantastic, unbelievable. You've done a great job. Okay, now, I don't know if there were people who came in late. Is anybody missing a voting card? Everyone have one and only one? If you, okay. No, one, eight dots, eight dots. Everyone gets eight dots. I have 15 for ten. <laughs> okay, and we get we get to vote too, guys. So, thank you. Okay. All right. Is um, number ten off the table, though? I mean, didn't we already do the sidewalk about that? Hmm? Vote for number ten if you think that hard. Uh, so we have two bump outs in town. There is granite curbing and a sidewalk that bumps out. If you want more of those, vote for number ten. Okay, if you think, I'm sorry, there's one in front of the pharmacy, I think one of you. It's one by the school. But it's a hard, it's, it's the sidewalk actually, you know, granite curbing goes out, the road stops. That's what you, if, if, if for tonight, if, if that's what you want, vote for that. Is that a hard thing for the street folks to plow? Yes. 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 It is. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's a trade-off between one thing and another, but yes, it is hard for this to file. Okay. Okay, so here's the voting process you had asked earlier about what to do. So here's what to do. Each person gets eight red dots. You've already achieved that. You may allocate your dots to any one idea or multiple ideas in any combination. Eight, you can vote for eight ideas, one dot per each. You may not cut your dots in half. <laughs> Dots must remain unaltered. But you can vote for all, all eight on one idea if you think it's really important. If you like, this is my point earlier, and I made it about wayfinding, but maybe it's true of others. If you like part of an idea, but hate part of that idea, we suggest you vote for it and we'll work that out in the planning process. If we think that it's something that is really, you know, a, a controversial idea, we'll seek further public input. <laughs> And last is you have to take the voters' pledge. Now this is voters' pledge is important because the, in this process of voting, if those of you that have participated in these sticker voting things, the time-consuming part of this is counting at the end because there's a lot of people and a lot of dots, and we don't want to spend a lot of time counting. And so we want you to place your dots in in, in the there's in in the right place and so you can see these sheets you can't see them perhaps but when you get up close these are actually graph paper and they're little blue dots i mean little blue squares there's 10 of them and 10 of them and there's rows of 10 and rows of 20 and we want you to place them in order so that when we're done we can, we can immediately see if there's one row filled up that's 20 and we know it right away we don't have to count one two three row. Right, so you have to place your dots. So I want everyone to raise their right hand <laughs> and repeat with me. I dots and I place my little blue dots in the middle of the blue boxes. Alright. So seven fifteen, we're gonna we'll reconvene. If everyone is done, we'll when you're done just sit you know, sit back down or, or congregate and speak but we won't go past 7.15. We're gonna try, it's, it's, it's awkward here because we have a sign that says, please do not move these tables. So, we, so we're gonna move the chairs out so you can get back there. Place your dots, please keep them in order. Don't skip the space because you took the pledge. Okay, go. And they, they go in order, they go from one to 13, from 14 to 28, and then the new ones are up there. Here, Beth, I'm gonna, do you mind if I take the job? I'll give it back. Okay. 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 Okay.
<laughs> no one's going to stay on that seat. <laughs> One word to say, but... No worry. How are you doing, man? I'm not loading. Come on, you got to load. Oh, you're smart. I'm going to go big Do the one. Love it. Chewing on that one, right? That one's perfect. Spiky. Yeah. I grew up in North Carolina where you never went anywhere without taking a Actually, when I saw the growing up, <laughs> Keeps us real. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
single digits or that one is 11. So we've kind of got two categories. One, I'll sort of say 20 or more, maybe 27 or more, whatever. And then there's a group of like 17 to, to 23, a middle group, and then the rest are pretty small. So this isn't quite as concentrated as I would have liked, but it's still pretty concentrated. We, we could get rid of, for 2020, 20 ideas, right? Or 25, actually, because we have like 34. We could get rid of, of, of 22 or 23 of the 34. And le that leaves us with 12, with some clear priorities among those 12 and then a second set that we might also consider. Um, and so again, so what we're going to do with this is we're now going to take this and try to figure out how many of these we can develop detailed plans for. So, and we then have to compare them, remember, to the plans of the other groups. Housing may come and say, you know, this is all nice, well and good, but we need, you know, a ton of money to do housing, and we may collect as a community or as the EDC or both decide that um, that housing is really more important than most of these. So that's going to be coming in the next four months, and hopefully, again, by the end of December, we'll have a meeting. It may take us till January, but we're not going to go too far into 2020 to develop the annual plan. So, I, Susan, Sally, what is it? It's Susan, Sally. Um, I, I'm actually. Uh, texting with someone who's watching online right now, and they were just wondering if there's any way that they could have submitted their votes. Okay, so did everyone hear the question? Can, can people vote remotely? Right. So that suggestion, the answer is tonight, no. Uh, first of all, I don't think one vote wouldn't change the, you know, the, what, the conclusion. But I want to say that it's been brought up particularly by folks who are younger, who may not have the time to participate but watch on their phones. And so we're going to try to investigate whether or not we can allow remote voting, you know, in general, or, or and or remote commenting on a public discussion when there's an EDC meeting. So we're working on, I mean, we're going to start to work on that. So, okay, Susie. So are you going to have meetings like this for like the housing and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, we're, we're, going to, we're going to figure out a way for the public to provide input. I, the other groups aren't going to have, they're not going to start with a report that has 28 ideas. So I'm not sure that the mechanism is the same, but we are going to, we are going to publicize when these subgroups meet and we're going to, or at least some of their meetings, where we're looking for public input and we're going to figure out a way to get public input on the other three. When you have your meetings, can you make sure they're not during business hours because people who work can't participate? Right, well, is this, this was not during business hours. No, is this right? is a good okay, time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, well, I mean, I think all of our, I think all of our meetings have been at <laughs> 7 o'clock. Is that not right? Yes. Oh, 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 right. Okay. 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 Nobody can do that. Yeah, yeah. No, so just one, I don't want to digress too much. So the, the short answer is look, we're clearly, we have heard a lot of people say that we need to be, we need to seek more community input. I hope you can see, not just from tonight, but even before tonight, that we're doing that, but there's a lot more to do. And so let me just generally say we're going to try to do as best a job as we can while still trying to kind of get the work done. You know, so. All right, so, so any, so <coughs> there may not be any reflections um, on this, but if anyone has any comments, let's try to keep it to physical amenities and so forth. Um, rather than a general critique of the EDC, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, 27 and 3 are very closely related about doing things on the green. Yes, correct. But this is, right, this is a, correct. But I mean, this is a much more modest project I mean, than, right. than, than that. So. But it's a piece of that. Correct, it is a piece of that. It's a piece of that without right. being extraordinarily expensive. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is something, again, remember that this is probably going to be a multi-year process where I hope we would, I mean, look, I would say that this process tonight, thank you, it seemed to work. I mean, it was hard, but you all managed to put up the dots. And I think we got some really clear priorities and information from it. So I hope we can repeat this kind of process when it's called for, you know, over the years and so forth. So it could be that we do three this year and 27, a part of it this year and a part next year, or we may not be able to do it because housing needs all the money. We'll have to see. Yeah. Um, when it gets narrowed down and you you maybe zeroed in on one or two projects and you know the dollar amount, is the final vote going to have to go before town meeting no. or be on the ballot? I mean, uh, let me just finish why I'm asking yep. because I know with the flower project that just happened that there were there what was, was that people. <laughs> <laughs> what flower project? Was it a flower project? That, um, that people said, you know, why? Some people were expanding on that and using that. Why are we voting? Why are we voting on these things? Right. And town town meeting and things like that. Okay. So the current process is that that the select that the EDC recommends expenditures. First of all, that the full EDC has to vote on on its recommendations. So there's some work that gets done by a subgroup like this group, you know, um, and and and, the, and those other subgroups that you'll see all. Requests for funding have to be approved by the EDC and then have to be approved by the select board. Okay. Both of those votes are public at public meetings, at regularly scheduled public meetings during non-business hours. Okay. So there's a, that level of input, and that has existed since the beginning. I think Tom since the beginning. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, the. Uh, I just think we should be taking as much public. No, no, I. I, I Correct. No, and that's why we're doing this. I, my, my my own personal instinct is that I mean I know that the select board. I mean we have a couple of members here tonight. That, you know has a lot of work on their plate. Someone has to do the work that the EDC is doing. It could be the select board, but but then they have to do that work too. So hopefully what we can end up with is a process where people may not agree on all the decisions, but they understand better how the decisions were made and they had a chance to input because we've you know, been communicating, been over communicating. We, we have multiple vehicles. Like, for example, on the EDC website, there's now a form you can fill in to provide feedback to the EDC on anything. No, it doesn't have to be physical amenities. It doesn't, you know, it can be, it's just you put your name and you type your text. And the email goes to us and we send it out. And we, but in a way, I mean, so the money that's being spent is, is not only tourist dollars, yeah. this 1% tax, but it's our, it's our money too. We right. you live here. Or paying that one percent tax, right. it'd be nice if it became almost an article, a warrant on the ballot of uh, an article on the ballot that you know, do you authorize the EDC to move forward with probably spending this amount of money? Right. Well, the, the, but, that, you know, the, the there was a regulation. That the what's it called? The war. Whatever. Just the article that was voted didn't specify that, and then the select board decided to. I think it was a select board decision to delegate to, to give this role to a committee. And I think the select board could um, could add this in or not. I, I, you know. John, can I we can help sure. that a little bit? It, the original proposal did not stipulate that anything everything that was decided by the EDC had to be voted on by the public. It was the decision of the existing select board then decide to authorize us to more or less vet the proposals, bring it to them, and they would vote on whether to approve or not. That was the original design that everybody voted on. When it was, and that was voted on by the public. Yeah, but, but I understand the suggestion. I mean, you're, you're not sure you're not the first person to have thought that. Yeah. And, you know, I guess we just have to sort of have to leave it to the town. I think what we're going to do is we're going to work as hard as possible to make that unnecessary because what that means, not because we want to protect ourselves, because that means we're doing our job. Right. Yeah. And then you all, collect, we all have to decide as citizens whether that's good enough. So, I mean, cool. you know, it, it wouldn't, I don't think it would be the end of the world if we did what you described. I, I would prefer to not have a need to do it, but that would be my, because I, I want to try. I know there's a lot of feedback and time people saying, oh, you know, the town budget gets voted on by you know, the 60 people that go to town meeting, right. this and that, why is it Australia about it? And I hate to just see you get that, yeah, coming yeah. Show people coming back to you going, well, yeah. one of the 20 people in the world, why is it, you know? Right. Well, one of the so, analyses, by the way, there's 12 people in the room 
and voted on the $18 million school budget. Right. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, so it's great that you've all shown up here. I think that's really If we showed up because you really advertised Hella. Uh, that's right. right. And we said pizza. <laughs> <laughs> So understand the point, and I think we're just trying to we're, we're trying to you know be as transparent as we can and get you know. And again, by the way, on issues like this, and the same is true of the town budget. No one's ever going to completely agree. So there's you know that's not that's not really the issue. It's really about transparency and letting people giving people a voice, like we tried to do tonight. Right, you, you, think, you think if we had future town meetings that more people would come? <laughs> Absolutely. Some, some towns do that. Absolutely. Sure. Sounds good. Can I make an announcement? Yeah. Um, so I have a motion to approve the budget. I just wanted to remind people that we are having a community picnic on Monday evening. And if you haven't seen these photos of ones that were done in the early this one's 1997 that one's 2011 but there's a whole series of them so this used to be an annual event right. so we are this is part of the community visioning visioning steering committee brought this forward and it is open to the community we would love everyone to come the firemen will be cooking chicken Billings Farm, or the Woodstock Inn will be doing grilled cheese sandwiches made from Billy cheddar so um, it's going to be a great event we would love you all to come yes. bring your families and friends it's going to be a gorgeous Where, when? Billings, Billings Farm, 5 five o'clock on Monday evening at Billings Farm. All right, thanks, Sally. Yes, go ahead. Hold on, one conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Diana Brown. Um, good one. I want to thank all the people who showed up tonight, but I want to thank uh, John and the rest of the committee, the EDC committee, for doing such an excellent job of getting the word out. Okay. Uh, it, it does matter. <laughs> Well, all the work, 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 are you regular meetings up in public? Absolutely. The third, to, uh, our meeting starts in 10 minutes. And it's whatever this, the first Thursday of every month. Okay. Right. 7 o'clock right yeah. here. They're thrilling, by the way. I mean, he's not. Other, any other thoughts or reflections? Help people pick up their trash. Yes, okay, so there's a black, this room is not, it doesn't have a big garbage bag, but there's the a black, black plastic bag, bag right, right next to it. Right next to it. So if you can help to do that, that is a few people, up. after everyone gets up, if a few people wouldn't mind helping us just switching the chairs to face this way, that would be great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Good job.